Welcome to the Zions Bank Economic Update. I'm Joseph Mayans, and joining me is Robert Spinlove to, to discuss some interesting trends in the recent economic data. Robert, recent reports have indicated a growing divergence between the so-called hard and soft economic data. Could you please explain the differences between these two types of data? Sure, it's really interesting what we're looking at. So we've got uh, soft data, which is things like consumer confidence, like mm -hmm. uh, business confidence, uh, things that are indications of uh, people's uh, ideas about what's happening with the economy. And those are looking very good. Another one is our, our stock market. Uh, stock market is kind of an expectation of future act economic activity. So those are all kind mm -hmm. of soft uh, economic indicators. Your hard economic indicators are uh, things like employment or GDP mm -hmm. or, uh, or uh, inflation which are actual measures of economic output or economic indicators that are uh, uh, more measurable and mm -hmm. less subject to uh, individual characteristics or in individual opinions. Great. So, so what is the divergence that's been, that's been going on between the hard and the soft data? So what we've been seeing, and it's really been uh, over the past six months or so, ever since the uh, uh, November election of 2016, mm -hmm. is we've seen uh, a, a divergence between the soft and the hard economic data, mm -hmm. where the soft data, things like consumer confidence, have, have spiked. Things like uh, uh, business confidence, the NFIB Small Business Confidence Index, mm -hmm. has moved up dramatically. Uh, the stock market uh, jumped from around 18,000 uh, before the election to over 21,000 mm -hmm. uh, currently. So we've seen many of these uh, indicators or these soft measures, expectation of future inflation has gone way up in the last few months. So they've gone way up, the, the, the soft data has, has jumped, but the hard data has either held constant mm -hmm. or it's even come down a little bit. So for instance, when you look at GDP, we expected G, uh, first quarter GDP to come mm -hmm. in around nine tenths of one percent, yeah. came in at seven tenths of one percent. So not, not only it, did it come below the expectation, mm -hmm. but it was lower than previous months. Uh, also, when we look at actual um, inflation, mm -hmm. uh, the consumer pr price index came came in below our expectation. Mm -hmm. The producer price index came in lower than we're expecting. When you look at uh, even our latest employment report, while the mm -hmm. total number of jobs created at, at just over 200,000 was good, we saw uh, a decrease in wages and a decrease uh, in, the, uh, in the labor force participation rate. So we're seeing kind of mixed mm -hmm. indicators that are not consistent with what you would expect to see because of the dramatic increase in the soft data. Right, interesting. Uh, so you said a lot of the run up in the consumer and business sentiment occurred around and after the presidential election. Why is that? So it's interesting. This, uh, it's a result of expectations of the Trump economic agenda. So people expected that the Trump, Trump economic agenda would result in much uh, higher economic growth. And it's true. Mm -hmm. If the Trump economic agenda, as spelled out, is uh, fully implemented, it will result in higher economic growth. Right. Things like a reduction in taxes, or uh, a, an increase in infrastructure spending, or uh, uh, other areas like uh, renegotiating our international trade agreements. Mm -hmm. All of those will have a positive economic impact to our country. And so that's why there is this expectation of it being higher, and that's where we see uh, these uh, uh, sentiment numbers coming up uh, dramatically. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And so how, how do you see things going forward? Do you see this trend continuing? Um, or do you see the, the, the data starting to converge? Well, so the, the, the big question now mm -hmm. is whether uh, the, the new administration, the, uh, the Trump administration will be, and, and Congress for that matter, will be able mm -hmm. to follow through on the things that they said they were going to do uh, leading up into the election. Right. If they're able to cut taxes dramatically, if they're able to increase infrastructure mm -hmm. spending, if they're able to renegotiate uh, our international trade agreements and, and bring more jobs into America, mm -hmm. If they're not, and this is yeah. the, the big question, if they're not able to follow through on some of those campaign promises, mm -hmm. as high as those expectations have been, yeah. they could very dramatically and very quickly drop and actually start to provide a drag on our overall economic growth. Right. And that's one of the risks that we run into when we've got such a dis uh, big disparity between those uh, different types of economic data. 
That's great. Well, I appreciate the explanation. It's going to be interesting to see what comes out of Washington in the next couple of months. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us for this economic update. For more information and analysis, please visit zionsbake.com forward slash economy.